Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and I'm speaking with Mahesh Bhatt, a photographer and a photo educator based in Goa, India. He actually teaches at the one school in Goa, and he's been on Tiffin Box before. He's been on Tiffin Box probably a couple of times now. Mahesh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Seishu. It's good to talk to you again. Uh, it's been a while since we spoke, though we have been corresponding over email and Facebook. Yes. Yeah, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Listen, uh, I know you're getting uh, getting ready to launch a new project. Actually, it's a sequel to your unsung project you did in 2007. I mean, that was a while ago. And now you've come back and you want to release a new book. Uh, it's coming out, I think, in the next year or so. And you're looking for funding, of course. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about the the motivations behind making the second book, okay? Um, tell me a little bit about the book itself. I mean, for most people, Unsung uh, is a book that uh, you, you actually uh, came up with to celebrate the lives of uh, ordinary people doing extraordinary things in their community. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, the Unsung project uh, started uh, in about... at. 2004 oh. and it was it was published as a book in 2007 okay you know the, f the first book uh, uh, and I self published it and uh, uh, it uh, kind of uh, chronicled the lives of nine unsung heroes um, of, of the of India mm -hmm. and right from him Himalayas down to Kerala Nagaland on the east to Rajasthan on the west That's fantastic. Um, yes and uh, you know, it was very well received. Uh, you know, I managed to sell over six and a half thousand copies, which I believe is a record for books, uh, such books in India. Uh, and um, it helped raise over almost rupees nine million uh, to the causes of the heroes featured in the book. So, you know, how much is nine million rupees? It's divided by 60. It's about $150,000 or so. Fantastic. You know, uh, That's yeah. great. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it became a lecture series at Indian Institute of Management Bangalore which is a premier management uh, school in India uh -huh. uh, you know I myself uh, have been over the years have been invited to talk about unsung at uh, you know uh, you know places ranging from uh, eco-friendly resorts to large banks to mm -hmm. schools colleges and corporates and uh, uh, you know uh, IT and software companies uh, so I might have done about over 100 unsung talks you know so it yeah it, it, it really really did very well and it, it people have written phenomenal things about the book and how it's inspired them which is upon my website what people have said sure and um, uh, so so you know uh, I was kind of uh, there's an interesting story about how the second book came out you know how do you tell uh, us yeah you know it's like uh, I was I was online one day and you know my good friend Dinesh Khanna popped up on uh, I think you had interviewed Dinesh some time ago sure on, yes, uh, he's been on yeah. different box as well absolutely yeah so he popped up and said hey you know I would love to do if you ever think of doing unsung again you know I would love to contribute maybe a story or two or whatever you know so I said yeah it sounds like a good idea but uh, it kind of uh, stopped there because I didn't you know, I, this project needs a lot of money because you got to travel, you got to, you know, all these right. kind of things. So, right. so I, uh, so I said, yeah, it's good. Sounds good. If I manage to raise some money, I'll, I'll get in, get back to you. You know, on the on this, and um, it kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, that that conversation got over then, and I moved on to other things. And few maybe months later, I got an email again. I was working late into the night, and uh, I got an email from somebody, some stranger who said that, uh, you know, hey, you know, I bought this book, Unsung, uh, a couple of days ago, and I just couldn't stop reading it, and I had to you know, go cover to cover, right. and it really is an inspiring book, and why don't you think of uh, doing it, doing another one, doing a sequel, you know, mm. so I told him, um, uh, then he also said that he's a you know, financial consultant, and, and uh, that, that he would like to meet and talk to me about it, you know, so when I met him, um, he, he urged me to do another book and I, I was kind of, you know, uh, uh, humming and hawing and uh, hmm. so he said, what's, what's, what's bothering you? I said, you know, it's, it's, a, 
it needs a lot of money uh, and uh, it's difficult to raise money uh, for this kind of projects so he said how much do you need so i just told him a, num- uh, a number which is pretty big one actually yeah. and uh, he uh, cu- you know a couple of weeks later he came back to me with uh, uh, two checks which kind of covered that amount you know i said what the hell is this so he said uh, it's like a no strings attached grant private grant fantastic you know? wow yeah i said wow you know I, so i mean he came with the per, the person who you know, one of the there were two people who who uh, you know uh, were uh, gracious enough to fund the project and one of them uh, came across to meet me and discuss and talk and uh, so they gave this uh, money and we started off doing the project you know and uh, in fact one of the funders of the project has gone on to become a very good dear friend and we meet a lot etc and uh, the moment I got these funds, you know, I co- contacted uh, five other photographers uh, and they all agreed to do this project at cost. I mean, the, the money would cover their, you know, travel and, you know, stay at that wherever they went to and other incidental costs. So uh, that's how this project came about, uh, Seshu. Excellent. Well, you know, the backstory is fascinating, of course, you know, because uh, this is all your, I mean... It, it began from your idea, your your very simple idea of just celebrating people's lives and 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 the the amount of good it's done in the last uh, you know several years. I mean, I guess eight years now. Uh, it's it's phenomenal. It's absolutely great. Uh, and now you want to publish uh, the second version of the book that's coming out. And I've, I'm looking at a few images you sent me in advance of our our chat here today. And this is of uh, you know a gentleman. Uh, I think he's, uh, his name is Niketu Iralu, uh, peacemaker. Yes. Tell me a little yeah. bit about Niketu and what is, what is it so, so, what is significant about Niketu? You know, uh, Niketu Iralu is from uh, Nagaland. Nagaland is almost, uh, it's bordering Myanmar on the eastern uh, edge of India. Uh-huh. You know, and uh, the northeastern India, which uh, consists of seven states, has always been neglected by the, uh, the mainland India, if you will. It is connected to India through a very small uh, land piece called what we, we refer to it as the chicken's neck because it's a really, really thin land piece. You know, oh, land, really? Wow. Okay. And, yes. So, um, you know, Nagas, uh, the, the, the people of Nagaland are called Nagas. They're tribal people. And um, I think there are several or 20 tribes in that state. And, uh, you know, they didn't want to be part of India when India became uh, independent from the British, you know, and they didn't want to be part of the independent India. But India said, uh, you know, we want uh, all the all the all the parts that were under the British had to come to India. You know, you know that there was a little conflict, mm-hmm. and uh, so uh, finally they became part of independent India, which they didn't like. So they resisted that, and there was a uh, a for several decades there was an armed insurgency. Um, you know that took place in northeast and hundreds of thousands of people died and and it was quite a mayhem and you know the fountainhead of all this the naga resistance was a man called a z um and you know he had to, you yeah, you, you, cut, you cut out for just a quick second what was his name again a Z Fizo or A Z Fizo. Okay. You know. Okay. So, uh, um, in India, uh, in India, he says Z, as you know. That's you know? right. That's right. Right. Uh, so he was the fountainhead of the this this insurgency and the Naga resistance. Uh, you know, this whole resistance and the insurgency lasted for many decades, and it was quite violent. And finally, that resulted in uh, infighting amongst. Uh, the tribes and uh, it was it was quite bad. Lots of people died and and it was really really terrible. Yeah. And um, Niketu Iralu is uh, actually a he's the nephew of Az Fizo. Oh wow. Okay. Yes. He, but he had he was working for this so uh, this organization called uh, Initiatives for Change, which was earlier called Model Rearmament, and he was outside of Nagaland for many decades. Okay. Then finally, when he came back to Nagaland, he saw the dismal state of uh, of of the of the place, and he decided to work uh, on on what is called a reconciliation. You know, to basically uh, 
you know, the, the, the years of violence, decades of violence had left people very uh, divided, totally divided. And, and they were not listening to each other. They were killing each other and all sorts of, there was drug abuse and all sorts of things going on, alcoholism. So he, he decided to start with his own village uh, called Konoma, you know, and uh, it is near the capital of Nagaland called Konoma, Konoma. Uh, Kohima, sorry, Kohima is the capital of Nagaland and Konoma is the village. I see, okay. A and Fizo comes from this village called Konoma, okay, and you know, it's a very small village, but it's so incredibly beautiful, you know, if, if there is, uh, if ever there is a Shangri-La on earth, it is in Konoma, it is so beautiful, you wow. know. okay. But uh, over the last 20 years, uh, uh, like from the 70s to the 90s, the village had seen over 22 political assassinations or murders. It was a small village. Oh uh, you can imagine. Yeah. So, uh, Iralu started a process called uh, Honest Dialogue. You know, it is, it is as actually, I think Bishop Desmond Tutu had, uh, you know, carried it out, used that, uh, that, that technique in Northern Ireland. Okay. Two right. parties, you know, the victim and the victimizer, as they call, to across the table or you know, sit across, and uh, you know one person starts talking and other person listens. You know, got it. Okay. So only when the other person, one person, the first person stops, the other person starts talking. So when the other person talks, the first person listens. You know. Right. So it is just and and, and people were to ready. Uh, um, they they were allowed to say whatever they wanted. The honest dialogue. You know, right. and total listening. So, but what happened? This this dialogue, which happened over time, over many many rounds, uh, you know, made people realize that uh, they made for the first time they were listening to each other. You know, and that brought a transformation. You sure. know, that that people then forgave each other. You know, mm -hmm. and blessed each other, and therefore over a period of maybe a decade of this process, peace has started coming back to Excellent. the internet. So know? this this gentleman is really uh, responsible for making peace. I mean, so that's why he's called the peacemaker. Um, yes. And like him, uh, you've also sent me pictures of uh, a, a, a guy, I'm assuming from uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, which is a state in South India. His name is Narayan Reddy, who is an organic farmer and a philosopher. Tell me a little bit about Narayana Reddy, what, what is it that he did that, that uh, got you to photograph him and, and what, why is his story so significant for you? You know, uh, he's actually from Bangalore, he's, he's, near, he's near Bangalore, he's not from, though oh. he's, uh, he's, a, he's a Telugu, yes. which is, the, you know, um, he's not from Andhra Pradesh okay. or uh, he's, he's from Bangalore. Okay. Uh, though his mother tongue is Telugu, he's in Karnataka in more ways than one. Oh, is that right? Uh, okay. Yeah. You know, he comes from a farming family, but, uh, you know, he, you know, as a young child, he had a tiff with his father, so he left home, came to Bangalore, you know, from a village nearby. Worked in a, in a, in a restaurant as a cleaner uh, and, uh, you know, and, he was away from home for a very long time. Then he finally came back and got into farming. Uh, and he was doing conventional farming, you know, the regular chemical farming. And uh, uh, and, and and he met uh, this guy who was basically a, a, a former NASA engineer. This is I'm talking about like 40 years ago, 30 years ago, or something of that sort, you know. And who made him convert into do organic farming, you know. And, uh, you know, he's, he's the foremost organic farmer in India or maybe one of the foremost organic farmers in the world, including Masanobu Fukuoka uh, had visited his farm, you know, when he came to India. Okay. Because uh, Masanobu Fukuoka, you would have heard of him. He's the greatest natural farmer in the world who's no more. He worked in Japan. Okay. You know? Okay. When... I when Fukuoka's son came to India. He had heard about Reddy and he had visited Narayan Reddy. Okay. You know, Narayan Reddy, by living, uh, leading, doing organic farming and living an incredibly simple life, uh, today, you know, his net worth is about, about, uh, you know, $10 million. Is that right? Okay. 
Wow. Yeah, it's, yeah. But he lives an incredibly simple life because his ensemble, which is, uh, you know, uh, a white dhoti or a sarong and a white cotton shirt sure, sure. Uh, and, 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 a, and a pair of slippers cost no more than 200 rupees. That's be about $3, you oh, know. Wow. Okay. He wears only that. And uh, and he talks only about farming all the time, but it, it's it's like... It's so much of, you learn so much about life by listening to him talking about farming. It's absolutely amazing, sure, you know? Sure, that's cool. Uh, and, and, and your life changes if you spend like two hours with him. By, yeah. But he talks only about farming, you know? Indeed. So there are, there are different personalities like these two individuals uh, that you've, you've had, either you photographed or somebody like Dinesh Khanna has photographed. Um, yes. and, th and this new book, which is coming out, um, which is the sequel to the first one, is going to have eight stories instead of nine, all right? And, yes. And you're about to start a, a, a sort of a crowdfunding program, I guess, to, to launch the book, or, or are you already fully funded and you're just going to you're going to launch the book any any time the next week or two? Um, yeah, we will be launching the book. I will be launching the book in about uh, during you know the photo festival that we are doing at uh, our yep. school in February. That's right. We're doing a pre preview and then I'll go for final printing post the festival. Um, uh, yeah, we are almost there, and I think the funding. I need a little bit more another another six thousand or dollars to you know come for the printing costs to cover the printing costs that's why i've just launched a, a crowdfunding program okay okay excellent um this is exciting i know uh you know in this day and age when everything is digital you're out there making books you know uh it, it says so much about who you are uh, and what you want to do um you know i think uh, i think we're all truly blessed by by your example of making images and making books, I think most people just just stop at, at the at the idea of just making images and then I immediately putting it on Facebook and calling it a day. But you're taking that one step farther and and making books and having those books really be a part of uh, a, a dialogue in India, at least in India. I mean, it probably is beyond India, um, where people are actually uh, being celebrated. These individuals who are you know, you know. Uh, there's a picture of Mr. Reddy uh, in in the in the train, and he looks like just any other old guy, you know, who's who's just taking the train, you know. But uh, you know, we know now that you know he's he's this amazing organic farmer, uh, and who's who's actually making an impact on on what's happening in in India. Uh, so for that, I mean, being able to bring those stories to us is is amazing. Thank you so much, Mahesh. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. It was nice talking to you. Bye bye. Bye.